and then they, they, the smaller they got, they started to realize that they got into the atoms and the particles, that, that most of the atoms were just space, and that there were these tiny little nucleuses there. And then when they got into those, they thought those would be solid. Uh, they mm -hmm. were trying to get to the basic solid building blocks, they found that those were mostly space. Mm -hmm. So it's like this giant uh, holographic three-dimensional, almost like the holodeck on, uh, on Star Trek, where it's mm -hmm. virtual reality. It seems real, it seems big, it seems solid, but, but when you get far enough back, you start to see it's like a giant holodeck. There was even a movie, there's all these great movies coming out now, Matrix and Truman Show. There was one called 13th, The Thirteenth Floor, where they go back into the past, and then they go into other times, and the more they are able to shift from time to time to time, it seems like there's these holographic uh, virtual realities. One layer after another after another, and the more that the character, um, they get into it, you know, the more the character is thinking, gets very depressed because he thinks, this is all just made up. Uh, I don't know, I'm hopping from time to time. He's, he's, he starts to fall in love and then at one point he's like, but, but this isn't real. <laughs> that body's not real, this body's not real, so this whole thing isn't real. Now, even that movie I was talking about, What the Bleep Do We Know, they take a topic like lust, for example. Now, lust seems to be a very interactive thing. You know, you've got the perceiver and the perceived. You've got the ones who's, who's lusting and the one who's, who's the object <laughs> of the lust. It seems to be extremely interactive. And yet, uh, it's all part of this fa fantasy or hallucination that this sleeping mind is going through. So it literally, uh, if you feel lustful, and the old stuff is you make me horny, or you turn me <laughs> on, or you make me hot. No, 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 no. Uh, who's turning who on? Uh, the mind of the perceiver is doing the entire thing, you know, the entire thing. So, you know, that's why, in fact, they even carry it out in this movie to talk about, like, the, the interactions in the, in the brain and the peptides and, you know, the neuropeptides going off into receptors and the whole, I think they have these little peptides, neuropeptides, the little red ones are the lust. When they start to go into the bloodstream and go through there and they go into these receptors in the body, you know, it's like a very graphic portrayal they show a man mm -hmm. lusting after this woman who's stooping over, but right. they, they run it into the mind, and it's like it's entirely generated by the mind. So, in relation to your question, too, you have one question in there that you're dealing with, like, with death, uh, loss, um, where, did, where did my mother go, and so on and so forth. From the perspective I'm talking about, death is any feeling that you have that's not supreme happiness. So, if you feel guilty or shameful or jealous, if you feel a sense of grief, if you feel a sense of loss, if you feel a sense of, of emptiness, loneliness, anything, anything that's not supreme happiness is death. And you might say that the purpose of this life is to transcend death, is to transcend the belief in all these uh, emotions and, and the beliefs that generate all these emotions. So that in the simplest way, when we talk about God, God is a, is a, it's more like uh, you were saying, it's just God is. It's just a being, it's not a being with human characteristics. It's not anthropomorphic, you know, happy one day, angry, mm -hmm. zapping a tribe uh, <laughs> the next. You know, that's a very human God. This is a, a transcendent God that is, is, is associated with heaven or nirvana, that is blocked out of awareness by all these false concepts and beliefs. And when we come together like this, we have an opportunity to get in touch with what those false concepts and beliefs are, and then to, to release them or to forgive them and return back to a state of, of heaven. Mm -hmm. It's very practical. We don't, it it's works. not like we come here and we have an affirmation or a chant and we just <laughs> repeat it over and over and over. Everyone is free to open up with, here's what's going on in my life. You know, I've been traveling around and doing these gatherings around the country and Canada and now around the world, and everybody is encouraged to start with, this is what I'm dealing with. Because we don't really need another theology, and we don't really need another philosophy. What everybody's going for is an experience. And I took a path called A Course in Miracles under the camera over there, there's a book, 
And uh, regardless of <laughs> what you believe or don't believe about the, the book, uh, the book itself says it doesn't matter uh, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Jesus, whether you believe <laughs> in anything. Um, it just gives daily lessons to practice to help clear your mind of judgments. And it basically it says just use them. Uh, you may not believe in them, you may actively resist them, this does not matter. Just use them and you will find out that you'll have a transformation mm. that you'll be able to experience and know by how you feel, peaceful, happy, joyful, that, that it works. I think that comes back to, because a lot of those, a lot of those, uh, we, you, you had mentioned affirmations, and I, I'm writing a book about affirmations and denials. And I think that, that you're exactly right when you say that just repeating an affirmation with no feeling or no emotion with it is, is empty and shallow. And that point is, is that you want to get to that point in your mind where you know that when you're saying the affirmation, and it comes with practice, that's why I think there's 365 lessons in there. Nothing magic about 365, <laughs> yeah. but there's 360 so that you do it enough times that you actually... You don't say the affirmation to ever convince yourself, mm. because it's already the truth about you. You say the affirmation to have the realization and the experience of the truth about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, not that. Yes. A little quiet seed planting. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's very much. Uh, a lot of times, affirmations are thought of uh, of the positive formulation or or what is real and true. Uh, the course is really a course too in removing the obstacles. So. It's more of like peeling the onion of consciousness or mm. uh, negating everything that's not true. And what you're left with is truth. what is true. Yeah. And so I always teach that truth is approached through negation. Uh, in my life, it's been, I kind of got to the point where I was in college and I had the, the death of my grandfather, seemingly with cancer. And so I, when you have a death of a close loved one, it kind of is a trigger. You start to question all these things that you heard all of your life and you start to say, well, what actually do I feel and believe about this? And I had a lot of uh, anger, I think, that came up and I, I had always heard that God was all loving and all knowing and all powerful. But what my five senses were perceiving was a very loving, jolly, gentle man that turned into a walking skeleton. And in the end, seemed to be suffering so much that <coughs> with the cancer that they would have to they had to put him in a straitjacket because he would try to harm himself. Did you say uh, that cancer uh, comes to us because of the burdens that we carry, or what do you feel about illnesses and such? I mean, it's a projection of guilt. So if you feel guilty in your mind and you have something eating away at you in your mind, then the manifestation of the seeming projection onto the body is, is could be cancer, or in a sense like a heart attack. Of, you know, you're really closed off from your emotions and different things. So the body is simply a reflector or a mirror. And what I teach is that all illness is mental illness, in the sense that it seems to be that there's physical components. Mm -hmm. But I've even worked with people, I worked with one man, a minister, who, who was diagnosed with leukemia, and we went out, we were both training for hospice at the time, and um, we went out to lunch at Wendy's, and I asked him to tell me about his life, and he talked all about the leukemia, and how it was spreading, and the doctors had x-rayed, and so on and so forth. And I just told him, I said, uh, why don't you, first I asked him if there was anybody that he hadn't uh, spoken to in his life for years, and it was his, his sister, and I gave him an assignment, I said, go and call her up and talk to her. And then two weeks later, after he had opened the doors, talked with her, they left and everything, he went back to the doctors, and the doctors were astounded because of the, they took more x-rays, they couldn't find a trace of the leukemia. It was just a good example of the miracle. When you release the block on the inside, so to speak, then that's why you have remissions and miraculous healings and everything. Yeah.